everyone, it's Lisa here. I'm back today with a card video for you. It's been ages, I know, but today I'm going to be making a card featuring some paper glaze, a stencil, a beautiful image, my Copic markers and some stacked word dies. So this is the card that I'm going to be making for you today and I'm going to start off by running through the supplies that I'm going to be using in this video. So to start off, this stamp here is called Karen Girl. She has a coordinating die. She's part of the beautiful girls range from Picket Fence Studios and I always love to colour these images. I think they're so gorgeous. Next I'll be using the Geo Squares stencil for my background and this is one of the new word topper dies. This is called I Love Your Face and that's going to be featuring on my card along with one of the sentiments from the word topper subtitles set. I'll be using a few dies from the Hero Arts Rectangles die set. I've got some black card socks, some £110 and some £80 Nina Solar White. I'm going to be using some Stick It Adhesive along with some Pixie Spray. To stamp my image I'll be using black hybrid ink from Picket Fence Studios and I'll be using some paper glaze enhancer and one of the green paper glazes from the Green Ombre set plus also some white detail embossing powder from Hero Arts and a couple of spatulas. And last but not least, I've got a selection of Copics that I'll show in more detail in the video. So we're going to start with doing our background. I did add some pixie spray onto the back of the Geo Square stencil, left it for a couple of minutes and then I pressed my cardstock down or pressed it down over my cardstock. I did also put some frog tape at the sides just to make sure that that wasn't going to move around. I've taken some green from the pot. That is the lightest of the three greens that you will get if you buy the set of ombre grass greens. And in that, I'm mixing a similar amount of paper glaze enhancer. Now, what the paper glaze enhancer does is essentially move the, remove the shine from the paper glaze. If you use paper glaze on its own, you will notice that it has a really beautiful shine to it. When you add a similar amount of paper glaze enhancer, it removes that shine and it makes it a much more matte finish. And you can see how easily this goes through the stencil. I'm not pressing heavily at all. I don't really want any to seep through under the stencil. Even though I've used Pixie Spray, I am being quite careful to make sure that I don't get too much on the stencil and, and run the risk of it going underneath. It feels a bit like frosting a cake. It really is very smooth to apply. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna clean off that spatula and I'm gonna take a larger spatula. I actually don't mind having lines left in my um, paper glaze, but you can run a larger blade or larger spatula, I should say, over just to reduce the number of lines that you get. And then it's time, of course, to reveal the pattern underneath. And I do this very carefully just to make sure I don't smudge any of the paper glaze. I'm going to set that aside to dry and then I go off and I clean my stencil and my spatulas completely so I don't have any residue uh, paper glaze left on them. Now we're going to move on to colouring our image. So I'm taking Karen. And I've put some Nina Solar White 80 pound in my Misty and I've placed her down onto that and I'm going to use the Picket Fence Studios Black Hybrid Ink to stamp her down onto the cardstock. And I do do a double stamp here because it's a hybrid black ink. I do find that you often need to double stamp to get a really crisp black image. 
To clean off my stamp, I'm actually going to use the Picket Fence Stamp Scrubber. This is a really useful tool. I opened mine up, I keep it in a closed container. It was a little bit dry, so I sprayed it with some water and then ran it over Karen and that cleaned all the ink off nicely. We're going to move on to our colouring now and to start I just use a G12 to colour Karen's eyes and also the straps of her top and I also colour her ring and I use a C4 marker for that so just a few tiny portions of the image to start off with and then I'm going to move on to her hair. So for her hair, I use four different Copic colours and I'm either going to leave the cap on show or I'll put a little caption of which marker I'm actually using. But those are the four that I use for her hair. And I start off just by doing the darkest colour, that's the E59. And I'm just placing that down here and there in line with the kind of movement of her hair. Um, it's a really kind of loose image so my Copic colouring isn't going to be very blended or very precise. I just really want to add some colour and some texture I suppose to her hair. Here I'm using E57 and I'm just adding little bits of that around the E59 but I'm not taking any care to blend it out I'm literally just adding the color and some of those stray hairs I just use the you know either the E55 the E53 or the E59 just to kind of pick those out just so that they have a little bit of color as well and I apologize for my hand getting in the way it is really difficult to film Copic coloring normally I have to kind of bend over my eyes are not what they were and I normally have to lean right over and I'm a bit more precise with my coloring but as I'm sitting back so you can see it is obviously difficult for you to see um, around my hands some of the time, so sorry about that. But you can see what I'm doing here. I've just taken the E53 and I'm filling in kind of all those white areas. We're going to move on to her face now and I start off by adding some E70 around the edge of her face. I do that all around sort of from the hairline at the top all around the jawline and also behind the glasses as well because obviously you're going to see colour behind there as well. And now I'm going over that with my E53. So I'm just softening that out. I really like the shadow that you get with E70. And when you put the E53 over that, you do obviously change the colour but it does still leave some depth as well. After the E53, I then add in some E51. Again, I'm moving towards the centre of her face with my kind of lightest colours going inwards. I just added a little bit of darker colour around her nose. That was the E53 and a little bit of E51. I'm now going in with E50 just to soften that all out and I finish with E000 in the centre of her face. Now at this point I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to recolour her face. You don't have to do this. I quite often do this because I just like to add a little bit more depth to my colouring. It isn't necessary. I wasn't totally happy with how smooth it looks. So I just went in and I kind of redid the colours in the same order, the E70 around the edge of her hairline and jaw, then the E53, the E51 and then the E50 and E000. So you can see I'm just working through again to the centre of her face, just adding a little bit more depth. And here I'm adding some R20 um, as some blush around the sides of her face. And I go in with an E51 here, I think it's an E51, just because I wanted to soften the edge of the R20 out so it didn't look too streaky. And I'm going to move on to her arms now and I use similar colours, again I'm using the E70, 53, 
51 and 50 and I just move through those in order to color her arms in and I'm not worrying about where my light source is coming from I really don't color as precisely as that I really color just to try and add some kind of dimension to the image but I don't overly worry about my light source I'm just fiddling around here doing bits of her neck and things and I do go back and do her ears after as well because I always forget those and I noticed that I hadn't done her ears when I was doing her face but I'm just working on the fingers now and I just use three colours here just to kind of build up a little bit of shadow kind of at the bottom of each finger but again I blend it out with the next colour then I blend again with the lightest colour but I do go in and add the darkest colour again just to add a little bit more shadow around the kind of top area of each finger as you can see there. I noticed as I was finishing her fingers that actually I'd missed a little bit of her top so I took my G12 marker and I just filled in those two small areas as you can see there. You can't always see them until you start colouring so I had missed them and then I missed her lips. I used R20 on those and on her fingernails as well. For the camera I used BG15, BG13 and BG11. Now I actually find BG15 and BG13 to be really similar. I didn't worry about that when I was doing the colouring today, I just went with those colours. They're all part of the same kind of colour group so they all blend really well. So I start off with the 15 which is the darkest, I move in with the 13 which is kind of similar but very slightly lighter and then I just finish off with the BG11. So now that we've finished the colouring I'm going to take the coordinating die and I'm just going to take that down and I'm going to run that through my big shot. I set Karen to one side and my panel is now dry so I'm going to cut that with one of the larger rectangles from the Hero Arts Nesting Rectangle Infinity die set and I love the way when you peel that all off you get rid of all those little edges that were formed by the glaze. I've added some double sided tape onto the back of my stenciled panel and I'm now going to adhere that down onto my base card. I did make my base card before I filmed so I'm just pressing that down now so that's almost ready to go. And then I'm going to move on and I'm actually going to cut a small white panel that Karen is going to sit on. So I was just testing that for size, took another one of the rectangle dies and I ran that through the Big Shot too. I've added some double sided tape onto the back of my white rectangle there and I've just matted that onto some black cardstock and I'm just going to have a very thin black frame around that. I just thought it would stand out a bit better against the background. So I'm going to remove the tape here and I'm going to pre press that down. It will be centre but more towards the top. I want to make sure that I leave enough room to add my die cut topper towards the bottom and just removing the foam tape from the back of Karen as well because I wanted to make sure there was a bit of dimension on the card so I would put some foam tape on her and I'm just going to sort of position her within that white rectangle. We're moving on to the final bit of the card now and this is where I'm going to use one of the new word topper dies from Picket Fence Studios and I want to stack three of them up so I'm going to start by taking some black cardstock and adding some stick it adhesive to the back of that. I'm just going to trim off the excess stick it adhesive sheet here and then I take the word topper die this is called I love your face and I'm going to run that through my big shot with that cardstock three times. These new word topper dies I really like. I love the kind of modern thin font to them. And of course you've got that strip underneath which is ideal for adding a, another sentiment as well. So I'm just stacking them up here. There are three 
And I sort of wish I changed the order of doing things here. I stacked them all together first. And then I went to stamp my sentiment. Now I'm gonna use one of the sentiments from that set, which is the Word Topper Die subtitles. So first of all, I put the stacked topper die cuts in my Misty and I'm just lining up that sentiment there. Apologies for my head getting in the way while I line that up. So I'm going to prep my cardstock now using an anti-static bag. I use some Versamark ink on that stamp and then I apply white detail embossing powder before I heat set it. But you'll see when I applied the white embossing powder, because I'd used stick it adhesive, I did get little flecks of powder with kind of sitting on the top where the words actually join the strip. So it did mean that I had to fuss a little bit with getting those off with a dry brush. And in hindsight, I wish I would have stamped my sentiment first before stacking all the die cuts up together because obviously that would have alleviated all that kind of extra stickiness from the stick it adhesive. I finished off by removing the backer from the bottom die cut. I then added some foam tape onto the back and I've just pressed that down towards the bottom of the card. And as there's a little bit that overhangs the edges, I'm just going to trim that off and that's going to finish the card. I do really like how this turned out. I will have a list of everything I've used in the description below and there will be a blog post for this card as well. But I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope it won't be too long before I'm back with another card for you.